conceive of God as being transcendent and far removed from daily life. <laughs> where we now know, He's here. Where we, where we are sitting here, He's here in His Spirit. And both of us got His Spirit. He's here. Yeah. We, we can bend on our knees and practically stand in here. We just don't see we put His Spirit with us. Do you know what we don't realize? It's the same Spirit was the Spirit that rested on Isaiah. It was all Jeremiah. <laughs> Everybody is exactly the same Spirit. <laughs> That, I can't bear my mind around that. I, I, I don't exactly always grasp that. Because our belief, our, our, our belief is so bad. Our faith is so bad. It's so bad. And watered down. That yeah, that you can't grasp that, that, that the Holy Spirit is here. Yeah. And if He wants to say something to you, He can. He can. And He, he, and he, and he is he, inspiring he you will. in feelings. Yeah. He does, yeah. You, you will know something is wrong. You can. You, yeah, it's the same, it's like a moment. Yeah, it's weird, it's not an emotion, it's just no, you know. Yeah, you know, no, 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 so don't do this. Yeah, so, uh, that's he's not right here. It's the Spirit talking to you. Inspired writings replaced inspired prophets who spoke the Word of God under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That is what we believe. Okay? Mm. Since captive Jews could not attend temple ceremonies, the ceremonial experience of their religion became less important than keeping the law. To keep the law required a knowledge of the law. The people came together, synagogue means to come together, to study the law, changing the emphasis of their religion from ceremony to teaching, learning, activity. But now what happened? Now that started going into a ritual and not in a physical, spiritual thing anymore. It's going into a ritual thing. Yes, and that's, yeah, that's of course. That now it becomes ritualistic now. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not any more spiritual, by, by the way it must be spiritual. Since the law preceded ceremonial activities, they were also continued. Two major parties arose within Judaism. Within Judaism. The Pharisees who faced the law and the Sadducees who were the priestly class. With an emphasis of knowing and keeping the law, the scribes wrote the copiers and interpreters of it and later became established as rabbis. So that was the scribes that became rabbis. So, so we've got the rabbi, the rabbis now and we've got the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, the rabbis and scribes. The authoritative features of the law, the importance of these three pillars of Judaism is reflected in the New Testament. Doctrine of the Jews. The philosophical Greek mind sought to understand the world from within the world by the rational process. Greek philosophers sought to explain God from a perspective of the world and its life. The Hebrew mind functioned differently. Instead of beginning with the world of nature and attempting to prove the existence of God, Hebrew thought assumed the existence of God and explained the world and its life as originating from God. The existence of God was not arrived as by a realistic process of somatic thought, but the living God made himself known in his special revelation as a spiritual, personal and transcendent being. During the exile, the Jews came to the conviction that only God exists and he alone was to be worshipped. Monotheism. Yeah, Madison, yeah. Okay? He's the only God that exists. But they forget, that, still, but they forget that the word Elohim is actually plural, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, so, uh, 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 but yeah, they don't accept the fact that God can be human, we, spirit, and, and, and God and, and Father. And Father. But what yeah. are we? We are soul, spirit, and flesh. I mean, also we also three. But, but they, when his personal name of Yahweh appeared in Scripture to turn Adonai, that was law because Yahweh they didn't pronounce so or write the even the, the whole word, word because it was so highly respected. So we don't really know the writing, the no. exact writing of the word. Um, the term Adonai, law, was substituted to, in oral, oral reading. The customs arose perhaps in the third century before Christ already. Because Yahweh is the Father's name. <coughs> Jesu is Jesus' name. Yeah. The emphasis on the others of God did not exclude his nearness. The glory filled heaven and earth. Angels represent his presence with man. Angels appeared. 
to the people in the Old Testament. Yeah. Well, it's it common. Is. That was a common thing in the chemist they, people. They were still thinking they about people. Yeah. They, 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 they. So, who tells us today it's not possible? Why is it not possible? Hmm. Because we don't believe it anymore. Yeah, but we must also be careful. Is it the angel of God? Or well, is the, the angel of yeah, God? That, that, Paul you made that clear. Paul said, if, an, if even an angel comes to you with a different gospel, you let him be a Christian. Exactly. exactly. So it's all based around the gospel. The truth. The, the truth. truth. Yes. The truth. The election. The truth that the Israelites were the people of God was cherished by the rabbis. Israel was God's peculiar possession. His firstborn. Although the election was by grace, the rabbis thought that God foresaw that she alone was, would be able to keep the law and they still the Orthodox to believe they are the only ones. The gift of the law had given to Israel a superiority over the other nations and laid upon the earth the duty to, miss, to manifest festing God to them. God's name would be glorified before the nations through the observance of the law by Israel. Israel's concept of election contributed to her attitude of superiority over others. The Gentiles were considered guilty of idolatry and immorality. And they had oppressed Israel, therefore, they deserved the judgment of God. Outside the law, there was no hope for the Gentiles. But proselyte Gentiles who accepted the law of Judaism could be accepted of God. However, proselytes who were. Proselytes, that's the word who were initiated into Judaism could never hope to attain an equal position with the privilege of the Jews. That's why Stephen was stoned. That was the main reason they stoned him, because he was a proselyte Jew. He wasn't a, a pure-born pure born Jew. So he was not allowed to even be in that temple. And that's why they stoned him. Interesting. Because they, they, yeah. the, and the woman was uh, also supposed to go into certain areas. Yeah. Right. The Torah. The law came to refer to the totality of the divine revelation given at Sinai. It referred not only to the Pentateuch, but on occasion to the entire Old Testament and to the unwritten law which was transmitted orally. The law had to be adapted to change to changing circumstances. Oh, well. well, that's what they do today, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean they had to do it because there was no more temple and a large part of the law was based upon On the temple, but the that's temple. exactly what we are doing now. We are messing our own temple up because we are the temples. Yeah. And we, we, we corrupt the temple. That is what's happening in today's life. Yeah. Exactly the same. So Corrupting the temple. So, it's fit, so it can fit us. But interestingly enough, and that's tricky sometimes, is when is the Bible talking about the, the, the temple as the corporate body or singular? Or does it always mean both? It, it, okay, it's something I have thought of a lot. Yeah. Normally in the Old Testament it is a physical temple they're talking about. Yeah. Okay? But in the New Testament, when Christ is in you, you are, are his, his temple. temple. So he is in the holy place of holies. In the temple. That is why yeah. you is, is pure. Exactly. But when it talks about the body, it talks about yeah. the corporate. A lot, a lot of people that's that's what I want to in know. one body. Okay, that's what I want to know. Because me that's and you very is important. Already, yeah, because me and you is already two temples. Yeah. And we belong to the one body yeah. of Christ and God is Christ is the head. He's sitting right at the top, so he's in the holy of holies. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're with me? Yes. Right, okay. So there's sin. That would lead to death, which means is God would actually allow you to die. Not necessarily go to hell. I didn't hear it. Just repeat. There is something sometimes, because I know when they were dishonoring the Sabbath, mm -hmm. some got ill, and Paul said they went in, they fell asleep. Meaning, physically, they no. passed on. They weren't unsaved. No. But they were. And but they, yes, you that's the same with the, with, 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 when it comes with, if you destroy your temple, 
Yeah. That can happen yeah, as well. Yeah, because if you had, now in that line, we would rather look at, not that if you uh, got a cold or something like no, that, no. but if there's a drug addiction, drug addiction you're going to die. You're going to die. But then you also grieve with the Holy Spirit if yeah, you are a Christian. You, yes. So no, you're going to be physical and, and, and yeah, spiritually, mm, you're going to die. Yeah, that's that's dangerous. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So you must be very careful of damaging the body how, how you, you look do at it. How are you looking at it? Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, just to have a cold or to uh, that is not that is a normal biological problem we have because of the fall of sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you if you in knowledgeable you, you say you're a Christian but you go on um, drinking alcohol that you get uh, poison. Alcohol poison. No, that's your own fault. That's your own fault. Your body will die, but because you grieve, grieve, grieve the spirit, the possibility is there that your spirit is also dead. Because you grieve in the spirit. And God said, when you grieve the spirit, it will not be forgiven. That's the New Testament. So you cannot lie, say that you are a Christian, but you go on with damaging your body so badly. Mm. You understand? Mm. And not trying to come right. That is where there's relapse. There's people to help you. Yeah. No, to get right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Jesus and Paul did not reject the Ten Commandments or the Pentateuch, but they did object to some of the legalistic rules, yes. or the law or traditions of the elders, which were designed supposedly to guard the observance of the written law, but often per perverted the true meaning of it. Yes. So they didn't have the true meaning. No. So, uh, Zerubbabel's temple was completed in 515 before Christ, while uh, Joshua was high priest in Zerubbabel, grandson of the king Jehoiakim, who had been exiled, was governor of Judea. The prophets Haggai and Zachariah had encouragement to the builders. The second temple did not have the ark, which probably had been destroyed in 586 before Christ already. And that we don't know. The Holy of Holies was empty. And as I showed you, the, the, no, the covenant was, wasn't even in there. Yeah, the, ark see, the ark wasn't even in there. Not, so because they don't know where it is. That's now, that point in, is. A new, uh, in a new temple that I showed you last week, Herod's temple, hmm. it was also empty because they didn't have it. Yeah. Okay? Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Herod began restoring the extent. Extending the structure of the temple into 20 BC, and the task was completed only a short time before its destruction by the Romans in AD 7. So that temple was there while Jesus was on earth. Okay, they started BC, and it was AD hmm. um, when it was so it was in the time Jesus was on earth. The sanctuary proper was completed without 18 months. Yo, it's between 20 and uh, 19 BC. But the enlargement of the sacred area and the construction of the building exalted through to the temple required several decades. The destruction of Titus brought an end to Jerusalem as the religious center of the Jews. Hmm. Herod used white, white marble. I could just, just listen to this. Uh, I mean, if I can have something so nice. Herod used white marble in the construction of the temple. Covering part of it with gold, the temple court was surrounded by cloisters with a double row of columns on the south side. The Easter cluster was left from Solomon's temple, thus known as Solomon's porch. Now, if you look at the uh, picture I gave you last week, you yeah. can see it there. Gentiles were permitted in the outer court, which was sometimes used as a marketplace. The temple proper was at the northern end of the court and transverse to it. The eastern end of this area was the court of the woman, and the western end was the court of Israel, from which women were excluded. They were excluded from it. Yeah, they had their own court. Court, yes. They were separate. But even even in, 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 in their Shabbat gatherings, the women dog separate from yes, the men. Yes, that's correct. Just uh, next to this, you can actually see this small yes, picture of the it, yeah. bigger one that I gave you yeah. um, uh, last time. Um, the court of the woman. The court of the uh, priests was in the center of the court of Israel, in the middle of which was the sanctuary. The inner court and sanctuary was elevated above the outer court. Access to the sanctuary was by a flight of 12 steps. What? That 12? 12 apostles. Only the priests were 
permitted to enter the holy place, which was approximately 60 feet long and was separated from the most holy place by a double thick veil. Only the high priest entered that most high place once each year on the Day of Atonement. And that veil was torn when Jesus... Yes. Okay? And that shows, that shows the holy place is not there. We've got straight appearance. We've got, we've got, we've got direct access to God. To God. Okay? It was torn. That's why the, 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 the Catholic... Basically, that little hockey confession yeah. actually represents, let's be honest, it yeah, represents the Holy of Holies. Yeah, and that's, yeah, no, and, and, and the main thing is that it's not. Still, so it still is straight. It's not the ark anymore, it's not the Ten Commandments, it's Christ in your heart. heart. Okay? Yes. Although the law scribal class had replaced the priests as teacher of the Torah, the priest task of the performance of ritual in the execution of required sacrifices with jealousy guarded and carefully defined. The high priest whose office was for life and hereditary in the house of Zadok was in direct line of descent from Aaron. The high priest exercised both political and religious authority. Hectic, so it was a direct descent from Aaron, Aaron, yeah. Aaron yeah. yeah, who was the high priest of, the first high priest basically. Okay, the replacement of high priests by the political rulers resulted in a deposed Ananias, also being recognized by some Jews as an official high priest at the time of Jesus' trial. The priests and Levites were organized into 24 Groups, 12 count 12, at 12 plus 12 is 24, you know, which served in the temple for one week twice each year. Since almost a thousand were involved in each group, those who lived near Jerusalem functioned in the temple, and those in distant cities performed adapted rituals in the synagogues. Just know now that the gathering places was temples from the synagogue. So who are we? We are the temple. Yeah. Not the synagogue anymore. No. Okay. The responsibilities of those functioning in the temple were determined by Lot, the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 9, you can read it. And the Ten Commandments were recited. Incense was burned on the altar. The priestly basis was pronounced over the worshipping people. The sacrifice was burned. A meal offering was made and a drink offering was poured out. The Levitic choir then sang a song for the day. They had the new, uh, okay, they in an annual feast that they had, that they kept, and then we still keeping three of them. So we, they keep the uh, Rosh Hashanah, the New Year's Day festival. festival. Um, then, then uh, it was uh, often referred to the Feast of Trumpets. Yeah. And we know the Feast of Trumpets that there are still trumpets that must be blown. Yeah. In the New Testament, this was a physical thing that happened. Hmm. But the spiritual thing is happening, and it's also going to be a blown of the trumpet. Interesting, it's two silver trumpets. They reckon it's the Jews and Gentiles. Yeah, well, it can be. No, I, I don't know. That's what I some say. You, no, I'm, I'm just I'm saying, saying some, some say. Yeah. But the two trumpets represent, two, two, but two. can also represent first coming, second coming. Exactly. So yeah, that you don't really know. You can't do it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm but, also stuck there. Yeah, but but as I say, the trumpets like that the, the seventh month blow in the New Testament. Uh, yeah, then there's a problem. Okay, um, the day of atonement allowed on the tenth of Tishri. No, not the tenth of. March or whenever, they got the Hebrew name. It was a day of repentance and was really a fast rather than a feast. They fast. The annual atonement by the high priest was made by sprinkling the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. What is that in, in today's life? What happened here? What's the shadow image of that? Okay, where we not? The annual atonement by the high priest was made by sprinkling the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat. 
Okay. It's the Holy of Holies. That's Jesus. And it's Jesus. And His he, blood. He gave His blood for us. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean. Mercy. Okay. He was the lamb. The Feast of Tabernacles, Sakoth, also came in Tashri on the 15th of, uh, uh, and continued for several days. It wasn't just one day. No. And it's, it's nice to attend. Look like we, it's not a must for us. No. But it's the most beautiful thing oh, to great. go there. And I to, love to, to, great. to join the um, uh, uh, the it's it's saddens, it saddens me that Christians aren't really doing it. It yeah, really does. It's, it's it, really, it really, really, really saddens me. Really, really. The religious year opened with the fourth. The feast of Passover began on the fourth, uh, 14th of Nisan and continued as the feast of unleavened bread for seven additional days. And that we do not do. As we're supposed to. Yeah, that's what that guy came, that's what that book I've got, that's quite an interesting. I tried it one year, and you know, know how difficult that is. Hmm. You eat unleavened bread for a week. That's a real sacrifice. The feast of the Passover began at the 14th of Nisan in April and continued as the feast of unleavened bread for seven additional days. Now just think about, about the fact that for seven days you may not eat leavened bread. These combined festivals brought many thousands of the sun. That's very important. Yeah, of the sun. <clears throat> Remember that April in brackets, that's just the Congolian calendar, but of the sun. So go yeah. and have a look what the, the Jewish calendar is. Yeah. Right. These combined festivals brought many pilgrims to Jerusalem to celebrate the deliverance of God by Egyptian bondage. The Feast of Weeks, the day of the first fruits of the Pentecost, was celebrated 50, day, uh, 50 days after Passover. And that's still on our calendar. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit came to us then. Eh? Mm. It was a time of thanksgiving to God for His blessings. The strike to provide the anticipated harvest. The feast of dedication originated in 164 before Christ. Now just see where the feast started and how it developed into Christ and the Passover, where Christ took the Passover time going from the old, if I can say the old covenant, old testament to the new covenant. He's with us. He's in the Passover. Again, passing from the one to the other one. Right. The Feast of Vacation that I said originated in 164 before Christ. The Feast of Purim on the 14th of the 50th days of Adar in March was a national holiday related to the book of Esther and celebrated the victory of the Jews over their enemies. Right. The Sahedron, that's mentioned 20. The chief judicial council of the Jews, with the high priest as president of the Sanhedrin, it was comprised of 70 or 71 members. The majority belonged to the priestly families representing the Jews aristocracy. Scribes, elders, and doctors of the law are mentioned in connection with the Sanhedrin. It was considered com competent in all cases involving religious questions. Since the law of Moses covered every area of life, there were very few cases which did not fall under the ju jurisdiction of the Sanhedrin. <coughs> the Sanhedrin may have originated with a group of Levites, priests and chief fathers of Israel. They were under the ex executive leadership of the high priest who was located in Jerusalem for the purpose of hearing cases of disagreements which came up in provincial courts. See 2 Corinthians 19 verse 5 to 11. Shammai was the conservative leader in the day of Jesus and was opposed by the liberal leader Hillel. The council 
met in the temple area and was accessible to all Jews who sought enlightenment on the complicated detail of Jewish law. And if you got in a group, not even in a building, it was seen as coming together in the temple because we are the temple. Okay. It's also seen like that. The synagogue. The region of the synagogue is obs obscure. However, most scholars believe that exile was the impetus for its beginning. Two main factors account for its development. First, the Jews who lived outside of Jerusalem needed the opportunity to worship together at a place adapted for this purpose. The building of temples in places other than Jerusalem was prohibited by lack of funds and by Jewish law. Small Jewish congregations throughout the dis dispersion could not afford to imitate the elaborate temple, ritual and building. Secondly, Judaism was essentially the religion of the book. The observance of the law implied a knowledge and understanding of the law. Therefore, a place was needed for studying the law. Synagogue worship centered in teaching rather than rituals. The religious readers were scribes and rabbis instead of priests. However, priests shared in the teaching responsibilities. Prayer was emphasized as a substitute for sacrifices in worship. So then things changed, right? Mm -hmm. Synagogues combined learning and worship. Worship services included prayer, reading of a passage from the law and the prophets, singing of the psalms, and comments of, on or interpretation of the passage from the prophets. Isn't that what we supposed to do also? Yeah, pretty much. Right. But That's what the early church did. They just explained. Carry on. And worship exactly. Yeah. The people participated in the synagogue services, whereas they only observed the performance of the priest at the temple. The organization of the synagogue required a minimum of ten men. A group of elders possessed authority over both religious and political activities. <clears throat> a ruler of the synagogue was probably elected for one year to give guidance to public worship. He appointed those who were to read the scripture, to lead and pray, and to preach the reading selection from the law, and the prophets apparently fixed the sermon subject for the day. And the ruler invited someone to comment on the topic. So it was all together things. Not one person standing and giving his meeting and everybody must believe it. Sure. There was you could you could give your comments on that because that was time is running already in the New Testament. So what was the real meaning? Okay. In addition to the ruler, a minister was elected to prepare the building for worship, to announce the Sabbath and festival by blowing a trumpet on the roof of the synagogue and to bring the Holy Scroll for service and put it away again. In addition, men were selected to lead in praise to herald the summer Shema and to receive the distributed arms. Synagogues were scattered throughout the Roman Empire wherever groups of Jews were formed. In the time of Jesus, every Palestinian <coughs> village had a synagogue. But now you see what's going on today. We've got a lot of churches, but a lot of them are not really in the right way. Lesson 12, the parties and doctrines of Judaism. And it's quite a, a nice chapter, this, to understand it. There were four Jewish parties were important at the time of Christ. That was the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, and the Zealots. The Zealots. Yes. I don't know about the essence. <clears throat> yeah. no, the region of the name of the sect of the uh, listen there, not the church or the Jewish or the, the sect of the Sadducees is obscure. Yeah. Okay. The name may be related to Zadok, who was priest along with Abiathar under David and who displaced Abiathar under Sodom. The term may have come from Zadik, righteous. The organization of the sect possibly was associated with Atikonus Soko, president of the Jerusalem Sanhedrin and head of the divinity school, 
In the 3rd century before Christ, he was the first great Jewish doctor who bore a Greek name. A Jewish doctor with a Greek name. Hmm. And he was a teacher of a student named Zadok. By the time of the Maccabean revolt, the Sadducees existed as a definite party. Hmm. But see, there's already it's a sect. Hmm. Already seen as not what it's supposed what to be. What it's supposed to be, yeah. It's a sect in class. Yeah. The conflict and views represented by Sadducees and Pharisees probably dated back to the time of Ezra. However, Joseph has first made a definite reference to the two groups in connection with an event in 115 before Christ. At the time of Ezra, the common priests and some of their high priests had married women of mixed blood. Naturally, their descendants would have greater openness towards the Gentiles than many scribes of the Pharisees. Causing conflict between the two groups. Now, if you look going back to Solomon, they, they mention him here. Solomon himself had such a lot of wives and concubines, and they are a, 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 a woman with color between them, and that's in the Bible. Hmm. Go, go read it. Okay? That's, that's biblical. There is, there yes. is, uh, the mixed blood means it's not only French, Greek, or something like that. No. It was, there was different, but, but now, with some of the groups, there was pagan things also with them. Yeah. And he guys in their pagan. That's not sleeping around. I mean, the Jews today is a mix, it's a, a fruit salad. They're not pure. No. They're not pure Israelites. No. So. Sorry, I mean, they don't like it when you say that to them, but that is. But that's the fact, That's right? the fact. So naturally, the descendants would have greater openness towards Gentiles than many scribes of the Pharisees, causing conflict between the two groups. The conflict began things to the rule of Antiochus, a political Hellenizing party, which sought to supplant Mesohelic Judaism by Greek manners, and customs was opposed by the Hasidim, pious ones, or the spiritual yeah, ancestors of the Pharisees. The Assadim. His Sadducees supported the Hasmul Nayans, who became recognized as both high priest and king. Under the John High Carnus, the office of the temple. The courts of law and the high council of St. Hedron were filled with Sadducees. Their influence continued on the Solomon Salome Alexandra came to the throne in 76 before Christ. She favored the Pharisees. After the Roman invasion, the Sadducees regained control in the state. They disappeared from the scene as a political party after the fall of Jerusalem, 70 AD. Politically, the Sadducees dominated the Sanhedrin, which was under the leadership of the high priest. Josephus described them as the mighty ones who hmm. had the rich and their side but did not have the common people. So if you're rich, you're welcome. If you don't have money, you stay away. Hmm. And that started already that time. So this is coming for so many years. Right? The same with they, 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 they like that today as Very now. long time ago. Yeah. Very long time ago. For the Jews, it's not even now. today, it's very important to be a doctor or a Wealth and it's, it's, state is important for them. Capitalism, they just create a world whereby yeah. either you are poor or you are rich. Each, yeah, exactly. That's so the they, they got the poor, they then make the poor behind. And yeah. that, is, that is not what God taught us. Mm. That is not what you do. You help the poor. You give to the poor. Yeah, of course. Not if you have two of one thing, you give one thing to the, the poor. And that is how it works. And it stops. If you've been given a lot, it means you must give. You must give. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the purpose. God gave you to give. To give. Exactly. Right. The Sadducees separated politics from religion. The Pharisees believed that God would intervene to determine the future of the nation. The Sadducees entered into a foreign alliance because they believed that the independence of the state could not be upheld by the strictest observances of the law of religion. The party, party included generals, soldiers, and statesmen. So 
So where did our problem come from already? Very, very far back. They denied the resurrection of um, the Kabir, that is, uh, that is now a uh, belief as a practice as I the Sadducees. They denied the resurrection of the body, importantly of the soul. Doctrines which are not specifically stated in the Pentateuch, their interests were pre-primary this worldly. With other words, 99% of our people today believe in worldly stuff mm. and not in spiritual. Cool. No, they're, 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 they're not following the Torah, they're following the, 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 what is it called? The Pentateuch. Yeah. No, they're, not, they're, they're following the rituals, not the spiritual. Yeah, no, but they have a book where you have rabbis that write up each yes, year. Yes, yes, What's that book called again? Yes, they're, they're still got it, and that is why they can, they follow the, they can follow they follow the, that the more Levite, than the Torah. The Levite, yeah. I mean, that thing is more important than the Torah, yes, isn't it? Yes, they can still, they got this uh, blood, the uh, Levites, they, can still, they still get from the rich, they got it. And they do tell them, no, they do it. Yeah. They deny judgment of the dead. They believe that war of punishment is a natural consequence of our actions. So they believe the suffering on earth is a problem and we won't be judged for that afterwards. So you can do what you want to, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're a Jew and <laughs> because you're a Jew, you're, 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 you're chosen and you're elected. Yeah, you're associated, it doesn't matter what you do on earth, you will be saved, yeah. okay? <clears throat> if you ever was like that day. There were much sterner and judging criminal cases that the Pharisees, with the exception of more lenient treatment of false witnesses, they taught and many Old Testament laws should be interpreted literally and without mercy. And that is what a lot of people are still doing with the Bible, right? Uh, can I just ask you something about uh, <coughs> this and that they deny judgment after death? They believe that the reward and punishment weigh the natural consequences of our actions Action. here on earth. Uh, I'm not uh, a racist, but uh, I'm just trying to understand something because, yes. because this is a yes, yes. because they're waiting uh, uh, if you can see. Um, can you explain to me because uh, uh, I've, I've done my research for a long and long and long, long, long time ago. But I realize that it's true. <laughs> and I'm not saying that what I was just looking for is true. Is this most of uh, white people, if they are not uh, in Christ, they 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 make sure that they do everything in life. So which means that they do have money, they do have everything, so so that they don't care about. Uh, of the month. After life. There's because a lot of people, not only whites, there's a lot of people doing that. Yeah. Now, it's not, now in the United States, I see that, that now, mm -hmm. it's now black people from the United States, now they're training, you know, yes. they're training also that philosophy. Yeah. But most of the time, it was just like white people, especially in, not here in, in Africa continent, but in Europe and yes. in the United States. Uh, by, now it's even went to Asia. Yeah. See, now they are doing also mm. the same thing. Same thing. Now, yeah, they, are, nice now they are trying because, uh, uh, like here in Africa, they are trying just to initiate only like uh, a politician, uh, like a president, mm. or those guys there. They mm -hmm. are trying also to initiate them to yes. that philosophy saying that uh, life is about to have everything money, power, this, everything and that. Everything is going around. And you can just walk in, but not, you know. So that's, no, that's, that's wrong. According to what you said, that is, uh, yeah, that's mm. like, the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah that is the same thing. Like, so it's like uh, for them, God is, doesn't exist. This exactly. That's exactly. They, they, they don't believe in any God. You yeah. see what the Pharisees. So yes, Jesse, <coughs> coming back to just the thought, um, there's a lot of people. Yes, that doesn't. They don't they know why for afterlife. There's even people that doesn't believe there is something like afterlife. So they um, say, uh, going for money because they know there's something they must sort of uh, uh, adapt as a higher force, but they don't know what it is, so they do it as money. Then they, they, they must got a higher force. Hmm. 
But we that know what who is the higher force is God. We do, for us, we can handle life a little bit better as having money. So yes, that is very, very, that's the nature. Hmm. Phariseeism uh, shaped the character of Judaism and the life and thought of the Jews of the fall of Jerusalem. The origin of the sect, again, a sect. <clears throat> and its name is uncertain. Perhaps the name suggests one was separated. But whether the separation was from items grounded by the law as unclean or from association with Gentiles is unknown. Perhaps both. It's a shame how getting Gentiles is every time in trouble, eh? <laughs> The attitude of the Pharisees can be traced to a period before the exile, but the organized group emerged in connection with the Hasidism or pious ones during the Maccabean revolt. The Pharisees perpetrated the spirit of prophets who had been antagonistic earlier towards the priests for their laxity in keeping the law. The Pharisees were highest of Ezra, emphasis on observance of the law. After religious freedom was won by the Maccabees, the Hasidim ceased supporting the struggle for political freedom. The emphasis, emphasis. <coughs> the law sent to the religion, Joseph stated that the Pharisees were noted for their scapulous adherence to it. Circumcision, Sabbath days, and the great annual festivals were observed with strictness. Legalism, keeping the law, tended to become external and to be defined by particular rules. The Pharisees emphasized habitual purification and separateness with regard to both their own person and their cult furniture. They sought perfection of purity by the meticulous observances of the rituals requirements of the Levitical Code. This emphasis led to exclusiveness, the avoided contact of persons who were judged, judged ritually unclean. <laughs> so our poor Gentiles are No, no, we're clean. clean. We, 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 we know what it is. We know nothing. <clears throat> Ancestral traditions, in addition to the written law, the Pharisees pertain to traditions of the elders, the oral law which enabled them to adjust their religious practices to new situations. Jesus judged that they used the ancestral tradition to achieve their own lustful desires. Hmm. The Torah doctrines, the Torah and traditions, the Pharisees handed down the regulations from former generations not recorded in the law of Moses. Sadducees considered valid only those regulations which were written in scripture. The Pharisees considered the additional traditions necessary as a fence which custom and usage has built around the book of Moses to prevent the breaking of the law. They claimed that God had revealed to Moses at Sinai not only in the context of the Pentateuch but also the whole of the traditional law. The oral law enjoyed the same authority as the written law. <clears throat> God, according to Joseph, is the Pharisees attributed everything to God to purposely control the and govern history. Yeah, he is maybe just, uh, giving more a direction but it's our choice what we're going to do with it. Hmm. We've got the freedom of choice. Yeah. Otherwise, we all yeah, yeah. can just. And that's the point. Pawns, point. Sorry, pawns. 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 Uh, So we are pawns that we can just shift us on a chessboard. No, no. On a chessboard. No, we do not. We've got freedom of choice. Yes, he is controlling it. Maybe in things that happen and bringing back people and using some specific people like Abraham and Joseph and all of that. But. It's an enigma to me. Sometimes you'll create your environment to force you into another, into another exactly. but, but not going but against you your will. No, you are still the one that's going to choose what you're going to do. Yeah. Exactly. But it makes it so tough for you that you have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God revealed himself in scripture which teaches 
Spain to recognize the manifestation of his power, his wisdom, and his goodness in nature, history, and providence. Yeah, that's true. Monotheism was basic in the concept of God. One God ruled the world and directed the towards one end. Just a uh, I think that is, that, is, that is what's happening here. Yeah, and he started in the beginning, he's going to end by the end. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, he, is, he is one God. He's one God. Although this God was transcendent, he was present in the temple. The Almighty God of God assured the Pharisees that nothing could withstand his judgment and rob his purpose. He's not only in the temple, he's all with us. Man and sin, for the Pharisees, sin was primarily a religious rather than a moral concept. The rabbis conceived sin as disobedience to God. Sin was more an offense against God than against man. Sin was attributed to an evil inclination or impulse which God had created in man. Wow. Read that again. Sin was, sin was attributed to the evil inclination or impulse which God created in man. Do we agree with that? No. God didn't create sin that. Sin was impulse. more an offense against God than against man. Sin was attributed to the evil inclination or impulse which God had created in man. The good inclination in man was also given in creation. Nevertheless, the Pharisees did not deprive man of freedom of will. Yeah, it's interesting. That quite weird, that quite an interesting concept around sin. I, I'd listened to a, one of their rabbis once, which my friend Rail, <coughs> because I'm giving Rail stuff to look, so it's courtesy to take yeah. and look at what he's giving. What he's giving you. And this interesting thing is, like this guy, according to this guy, it all sounds like God, yeah, he created sin. He, he, he started, he yeah, didn't create sin. No, he didn't. The, 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 Satan they've, they've got chose. Satan proof wrong. Exactly. Satan chose to go wrong. Not just that. Because the angels got also free. They've got their own Torah wrong. Yeah. Because the Torah says it. man, but, right. that's, but because God put the tree in the garden, that's when God was testing them. No, no. So, but they believe, so nevertheless, the Pharisees did not deprive man of freedom of war. So we are still on the chessboard. Hmm. So no, definitely I'm not part of that one. Eschatology, the Pharisees believed that souls survived death and there were rewards of punishment beyond the, uh, beyond the earth, life by those who live lives of virtue or vice. Eternal imprisonment was to be the lot of evil souls, while the good souls would receive easy passage to a new life. A contention between Pharisees and Sadducees centered in the doctrine of the resurrection of the body. The Pharisees suspected an earthly paradise, not otherworldly, though they appeared also to have expected the pious dead to arise and share the earthly glories with them in the Messianic age, many Gentiles were expected to be converted and shared in the glories of the Messianic age. No. So there's some of them that got the, uh, positive. Yeah, that's that's right. Some, no man, no, but that little one, that little bit is a bit skewed. You no. see what happened? And that is what's happening today in our religions. The, 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 this part can be right. But just that little bit is skew, and it is, it, it, if, it, if you're off, you're off. It's wrong. I don't know, something just hit me now. <clears throat> you know, when you stand for doctrine, you stand for God's moral ground. Yes. There's a certain Christian group that will say to you, you yeah, you like a Pharisee. If a guy says that to me once again, I'm going to let him have it. That is because I don't think that. Because they have no idea what a Pharisee was. Yeah. Again, this is thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. Thank you. With the Messiah, the Pharisees suspected the Messiah to be a son descended of David. Therefore, he would be a political king. So he would have been one of us, if I can say it like that. A normal yeah. person that can do sin and go ahead and do that. Insult to call a Christian a Pharisee. Yeah. 
He would deliver Jerusalem from the nations and crumble to them, and he would destroy the godless nations. Messianic expectations took two forms. The nationalistic form of a coming glorious age of the Jewish nation, and the eschatological form of the final work, Christophacy, and the establishment of a new world. The emphasis Order. on the national <laughs> The emphasis, the emphasis of the natural or political expectation involves the recovery of the Jewish independence and power. The stop the Vanity Kingdom would bring about the era of peace and prosperity, <coughs> fidelity to God and His law, justice and fair dealings, and brotherly love. Among men. The hope of deliverance was connected with the appearance of a dynamic descendant appointed by God. The messianic deliverer would be a human figure designated as the Son of Man. Totally in the wrong context. Hmm. Okay? And then the second that Jerusalem was to be the seat of his rule. Oh, probably it will be at the end the seat of his rule. Yeah. The second coming. Yeah. They missed it. In The second type of messianic expectation was more religious than political. The supremacy of God, the King of Heaven, would be established and Judaism would become universal. In later development of the two concepts, the national golden age inaugurated by the coming Messiah would become an interim of varying duration in two aspects following by the new world. The Zenits. Anglology. This doctrine probably served for the Pharisees as the safeguard of the concept of the transcendence of God. Angels as servants of God made the blessing of transcendent God available to man. The Zenits. The Zenits were a sect, again a sect. Come again into it. Dedicated to the defense of the law and the national life of Jewish people. They were influenced in Galilee and later in Jerusalem. From the time of Herod until the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, they opposed the dominion of adulterers in Rome and were instrumental in precipitating the Jewish revolt against Rome. Josephus called them the fourth philosophy, to distinguish them from the Pharisees. Sadducees and Essence. Their primary talent was their opposition to foreign rule. Okay, so we Although Essence, so the we're not doing anything the in the Zenits. <coughs> Sorry. So there's nothing in the in the Zenits. All the religion of the Zenits is uncertain that it perpetrated the spread of Maccabees. They were deeply patriotic and were motivated by the zeal for the law. Their beliefs were similar to the Pharisees, but they carried nationalism much further than the Pharisees. Extreme Zenots were known as Sicari, assassins, members, this is nice, members of this would conceal small daggers under their cloaks and stab Jewish traitors. Who I, heard, I, I heard about that. I think the Jewish guy at uh, Matal Balistan, he, I remember he mentioned something like that. It was quite bizarre. Yeah, so that's what they were. That's what they were. <laughs> 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 Assassinating you. This is not number 11, but number 11. Poets, Jews, withdrawn from society and live in monastic communities from which women were usually excluded. They withdrew from the defilement of everyday life and lived austerely, observing communal ownership. They sought ceremonial purity through baptism and communal meals. They rejected military pursuits and supported themselves by manual labor, usually in agriculture. The time which was not consumed with manual labor was devoted to studying the law. Although the essence agreed with the Pharisees concerning need for personal piety and separation from the impurities 
of daily life, they rejected the doctrine of bodily resurrection. They did believe in the immorality of the soul. They considered Sadducees and temple services corrupt. Therefore, they withdrew from society. They strictly observed the Sabbath and the Levitical law of holiness. They object to oaths but believe that if an oath was taken, it could not be rescinded. Now, if that was still possible today, it would have been nice, eh? mm -hmm. Because we say so much, I, I promise, I promise, I promise, and yeah, nothing happened. There is no mention of the essence in the New Testament. However, the scholars believe that John the Baptist was influenced by them. His early life is in, and ministry were in the vicinity of the Qumran community. Many scholars also believe that the early church was greatly influenced in doctrine and organization by the essence.